firebomb. The abortion clinic? Mainly. Went up around five. DOA's a security guard. Looks like the fire killed him. Anyone see it? No one's come forward. Greg and Baldwin are doing a canvas. Ortiz is pulling the surveillance tapes. The owner been contacted? Security company called her. She's in back with the head nurse checking if anything's missing. I'll get him. Uh, I was at the gym, so I got your message late. Tonight? Seven? I'm taking Theo to Planetary. Some kind of light show and a guy droning on and on about billions and billions of stars. Uh-huh. Sounds interesting. Theo asked, could she come? I figure having a woman around is good for him. So is, uh... Theo partial to blondes? What's that mean? <laughs> Andy, come on. What? Who are you trying to kid? You two are out together like three nights a week. <clears throat> Once a week, maybe twice, and always with my son. Yeah, and dark rooms filled with billions and billions of stars. Which ain't exactly a candlelit restaurant. It's educational. I'll bet. Watch yourself now. You're stepping over the line. I apologize. Detective Sipowitz and Clark. Jennifer Martin, RN, and Dr. Claire Wachtel. Any idea who did this? Well, I could give you about 200 candidates. Religious groups? Religious, pro-life. Some are just plain wackos. Any threats recently? Well, we don't have bars on the windows and cameras in a guard for show. Meaning there's always threats? Always. Any of them stand out? Whenever my life or the lives of the people that I work with are threatened, it stands out, detective. But as far as any group specifically threatening to firebomb, no one's done that, if that's what you're asking. What about patients? Anyone angry at you? Anyone suing? And patient information is privileged. We get that, but your guard was killed. We can't discuss patients. Confidentiality is our stock in trade. Now, without that, we might as well shutter the place. It looks like you're going to have to anyway. Not for good. Can you help us with the groups who have threatened you? I'll get the file. It can't be easy living under siege. Well, your guard gets killed by a firebomb. You open the books. Anything on the canvas? A uh, janitor from down the street saw a white guy sprinting from the direction of the clinic early morning, but he couldn't ID. Yeah, but a lot of folks went home. Hey, some guy called about finding a gun. Wouldn't say more. Are uh, you in medical? Dispatcher got a 911 call taking responsibility for your attack. A group called Save the Babies. The clinic doesn't have them making previous threats. They know where the call came from? Pay phone on Bowery. Uniform safeguarding until crime scene can dust it. Anything for the surveillance cameras? Uh, the guy's wearing a mask, but he looks white. Now run save the babies with intelligence. Meantime, keep working the names you got. Lieutenant. Um, Andrew Sloin for Detective Sipowitz or Clark. Yeah. <clears throat> Come on. Who's this? Yeah, he, uh, he heads one of the groups who've been threatening the clinic. We called him from the crime scene. Should we head out to recanvas? Okay. We got a homicide. Yeah, sit down, Mr. Sloan. Um, so why exactly did you want to talk to me? Are you the leader of a right-to-life group called Soldiers of God? Yes, I am. You go by any other name? Save the Babies? We are a registered nonprofit organization under one name, Soldiers of God. I've never heard of Save the Babies. Well, uh, let's talk about you and the soldiers. I mean, you lean toward the militant side. This is about the abortuary, isn't it? The one downtown. The women's health clinic that got torched. What do you know about it? Just what I've heard on the news. Do you have anything to do with it? No. What about the rest of your platoon? Any of them involved? I wouldn't know. So you're just a bunch of rogues who congregate under a catchy name. We are religious people who come together to share ideas toward a common goal, that being the abolition of abortion and the rescue of innocent babies. And in the past, have you tried to accomplish that goal by gluing the encounter clinic's door locks, by uh, cutting their phone lines? Some members, individually, take an active stance toward the goal. But as far as my having any knowledge of an individual's activities or the group having any knowledge of it, the way I understand it, lesson one in active rescue is trust no one. And that includes other rescuers. So that was just a coincidence ten of you showed up with handcuffs to form a daisy chain around their front door last year. Ten individuals. And on May 20th, 98, 
When your members spray painted Mommy Don't Kill Me on the car doors of five of their patients, that was pure chance. I think we're going in a circle, Detective. We'll stop when I hear the name of who torched that clinic. Detective, we are a nonviolent religious organization. All right, that's enough. Go on, beat it. Go with God. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Galatians 1.10. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Sipowitz, 1042. Down, please. Mr. Larson? Luke. Detective Jones of Medivore, you called about the gun? I might know where a gun is. And let's see it. A little patience, Chief. You gotta work out terms of deal. And what deal would that be, Chief? Someone I know may or may not have 19 unpaid parking tickets he's got a warrant on him for. Now, if that warrant went away, he might be able to produce a gun. This your car, Luke? <laughs> Sweet, huh? I'll give you even money. The mystery gun's in a glove box. So give it up where you got it, or you recall it for the gun and the warrant. Glove box is empty. Then it's in the trunk or somewhere else. But if you don't produce it in five seconds, we're searching the car and you're coming in. It's in the glove box. I was looking into reupholstering. Paint job, too, really working her back to cherry. It was under the back seat, wedged between the springs. How long you had the car? Two weeks. Got it from my uncle who bought the farm last month. <laughs> so if it's your uncle's car, then why'd you say you didn't know who the gun belonged to? My uncle got the car at a police auction five years ago. No chance it was your uncle's gun? He was a hippie. Deadhead. We'll look into it. Yo, the warrant? Yeah, we were going to put some time into this firebomb we got, but uh, it's probably better spent on your parking tickets. Gracias. My name's Gloria Simmons. Two in the chest. Super founder. What got him here? Downstairs neighbor complained of water coming through her ceiling. When he got in the shower, it was flooding. She was DOA. His name's Victor Razo. I'll, uh, I'll take him. How you doing, Mr. Razzo? Shocked, you know? Stunned. What, uh, what can you tell me about her? Nice enough. I just can't believe it. Was, uh, was she married? Kids? Um, they have a three-year-old boy. Uh, husband's an accountant. You know where he works? Some big firm, I don't know. What's his name? Uh, Roger uh, Simmons. When was the last time you saw him? Yesterday. Mr. Razzo, is this Gloria with her husband? Yeah. What's his name? Roger. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. This is the woman Don was having an affair with. The one you caught him with? And the husbands who came to the squad to tell you about it. it kind of puts me in the middle. Well, that's nothing I'd tell the boss for now. Thanks. Good. We got to find the husband. And Don. Yeah. You heard what happened in the bar that night. I mean, he's been acting crazy, but he wouldn't do something like this. Yeah, no. No way. Just tell the cops the place was bombed by Save the Babies in the name of Jesus and praise Jesus, and we're going to do it again. Sir? Call came in around 8 a.m. Crime scene couldn't get Prince off the phone. Three hours after the fact, he's still pretty amped up. It doesn't jive with the pro-lifers that we've been talking to. They got a steadier hand. Anything from intelligence on Save the Babies? I never heard of them. The fire chief said the clinic bomb was a standard Molotov cocktail, beer bottles, lighter fluid. Stuff you get at a bodega. I figure someone who'd planned it would use gasoline. And would have made a coherent statement. So if we're looking for an amateur, I guess we owe Mr. Soldiers of God an apology. I'll send flowers. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, there's a woman here to see you. She was all covered up and asked that I get her somewhere private. 
She, she's in interview three. What's her name? She wouldn't say. Uh, just that she was at the clinic this morning and she needed to speak to you. You're the nurse, Martin. Jennifer Martin. Yeah, I, I um, I wanted to know how the case was going. Slow. Have you talked to any of the pro-life groups? A few. None of them are looking good for it. Some things don't add up. Like what? Ms. Martin, do you have something for us? People don't sneak in dressed like spies just to see how a uh, case is going. Well, maybe I'm a little paranoid because my office was bombed today. Okay. I mean, has that ever happened to you? Something bothering you, Ms. Martin? Yeah, I'd like to know how many times you have been taunted on your way out of work and, and then followed home and then walked out your front door the next day to find a miniature graveyard with little white crosses. Ms. Martin. I have been with this clinic for five years and we have put up with a lot of terrorism and so have our patients, so I understand and agree with Dr. Wachtel's position on patient privilege and confidentiality, but I, I just... Pete, our security guard, had died. He was a sweet man. And I have two kids myself. I am sick of fearing for my life. You should take a seat here. <clears throat> am I right thinking that you want to help? But you think doing that might betray Dr. Wachtel? I believe in what she stands for. But that's not going to help find who did this. Whatever you give us, we'll say we got it anonymously. Duh. No one will ever know. I'll know. This is a patient list? In the past year, the Asterix are the people you should talk to first. As suspects? They had complications, lodged complaints. Some of them made threats. It's all spelled out on the sheet in back. I could lose my job for this, or be sued by Dr. Wachtel, or every person on that list, or both. So safeguard that. Don't let anyone know where it came from. We never saw you. And please, don't call me a spy again. Bad choice of words. Well, Ellen, if you could page Don again, I'd appreciate it. It's very important. Tell him it isn't about the divorce. I just need to speak with him right away. Thank you. Are you not finding Don? He's not answering at home, his cell, or pager, which could mean he's ducking me because he assumes it's about the divorce. What about his secretary? Has she seen him? She said he had an early appointment, and then he was supposed to be taking a statement at the tombs. She'll keep paging. Chief of D's call. The car registered to Roger Simmons was found with a DOA inside. What's the significance? Uh, that's our DOA's husband. Any idea on the body? All he said was DOA. 9-4 in Brooklyn. Check it out. Hey, Wes. Uh, ballistics came back on a gunfight on that Mustang. Apparently, there's a body on it. The Jindo dump job from five years ago. Did Luke's uncle own the car when the dump job was found? Luke's uncle bought the car at a police auction seven months later, so he's in the clear. But at the time the dump job came in, DMV said the car was owned by a woman named Paula Thomas. Same age and description as a DOA. Missing persons got anything on Paula Thomas? There's no report in New York or Jersey, and chances are there isn't one. The car was registered in New York, last address was New York, and we came up with a father in Queens. And then he should be here soon. Yes, him. Hi, I'm... Noel Thomas, I'm here to see Detectives Metavoy or Jones. Right here, Mr. Thomas. Uh, Greg Metavoy, Baldwin Jones. Hi, how are you? Man, have a seat. Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry to drag you away from your store, but uh, we need to ask you some questions about your daughter, Paula. Paula? Is she involved in something? Well, that's what we're trying to determine, Mr. Thomas. Uh, when was the last time you saw her? Five, almost five and a half years. Why so long? We had a falling out. She was a difficult kid. And you've had no contact at all? Two years after she left, I called her apartment, but she wasn't there anymore. And last year, we hired a PI, but nothing. Uh, you said she was difficult? How? Drugs, stealing. She was with this guy we didn't like, a real bum. He got her hooked. Was he ever violent with her? He'd smack her around. Was there a specific reason you never filed a missing persons report on her? Well, she's always threatening to go out to California with the bum, so we just figured that's what happened. Have you talked to Paula? Is she all right? I mean, what are you trying to determine here? Did your daughter own an old model Mustang? 
Yeah, I gave it to her when she turned 17. Well, the present owner found a gun under the seat. Oh, no, she, she wouldn't have a gun. She's a decent kid, deep down. Mr. Thomas, we'd like you to look at some photographs, but I want you to prepare yourself because they're photos of a dead woman. Is it Paula? We don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> We'd like to talk to the boyfriend you mentioned. Sonny Wood. <sighs> Take your time, son. <laughs> Have a seat, Mrs. Ruckard. Okay. Now, are, are you going to tell me about the case you want to discuss? Have you ever been to the Encounter Women's Clinic? Why? The clinic was firebombed this morning. We're hoping you can help us find who did it. Oh, how could I possibly help you? How did you find me? Let's concentrate on seeing if you can help. How would you categorize your experience at the clinic? Good? Bad? This is private business. It's doctor-patient privileged. We understand that, and we're not trying to pry into your life. We just want to solve the firebombing. Now, were you less than satisfied with the way you were treated at the clinic? I guess. Could you tell us why? Am, am I going to have to testify in some kind of trial? Ma'am, you're jumping a, a thousand miles ahead. Do you understand what would happen if my family found out I went for abortion counseling? <sighs> they would never speak to me again. My father is a deacon in our church. Answer us honestly, and we won't let it get to that. Answer honestly about what? You made and canceled seven appointments to have an abortion. Is that correct? I couldn't decide what to do. Did the clinic take any kind of action towards you? They refused to see me again because they said my pregnancy had gotten too far along. Did you leave it alone or did you contact them? Oh, my God, do you, do you think I firebombed the clinic? Did you contact the clinic? I was very angry and, and confused. It was the worst time of my entire life, but writing them a few letters doesn't make me an arsonist. Ten letters, two of them saying you wish they burned down. Well, I wish I hadn't written them. But I am glad they turned me away because my son is a gift from God. Are you involved with any right to life groups? Maybe one called Save the Babies? No. Where were you this morning, Mrs. Rooker, around 5 a.m.? Home. Can anyone confirm that? My sister, she's staying with me. Are you done? May I leave? You Ortiz? Ortiz, McDowell. Tim Young. Can pick it was pulling through the alley. Found them, stopped the radio car. Any ID? Nothing. No wallet. the husband, Roger Simmons. You seen him before? Uh, there was a photo at the apartment where we found the wife. You checked the trunk? I was waiting for crime scene, but be my guest. So what's your thinking here? Suicide. There a note? No note, but he's positioned right for it, and the gun's where it's supposed to be. Suicide not work with what you got? No, it does. Uh, looks like he killed his wife this morning and it got to him. We'll be in touch. What are you thinking? Don could be dead. Simmons might have killed him. We don't know that. We gotta check his apartment. Rita, why don't you give me the key and I'll check the apartment. I gotta see for myself. Don, it's Rita. Open up. Don, it's Rita. Don?
Mrs. Stancil, if you won't tell us where your husband is, then we'd like to speak with you. No one can watch your kids for an hour, huh? No neighbor or family, a friend? All right, look, if you can't come in, then we're gonna stop by, huh? No, no more arguing, no. That's it, we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Mrs. Stancil, from the list, her husband made threatening calls to the clinic. Pain in the balls. What? Patient list. Fuel it from the bottom. Does Jones know about it? I don't think so. Hey, sit down, Sonny. You should tell us about Paula Thomas. <sighs> sort of sounds familiar. You dated five years ago. Uh, the father owned a hardware store. He hated you. <laughs> I've had a lot of daddies hate me. Hey, try to focus, Sonny. Paula Thomas, brown hair, lived in Queens. Yeah. Okay, what about her? When did you see her last? Then, yeah, five years ago. She dumped me. That was it. Who cares? We do. Paula got killed five years ago. What do you know about it? Nothing. You serious? She's dead? <sighs> wow. Did you carry a gun back then, Sonny? I never carried a gun in my life. You ever drive Paul's car? I didn't know she had a car. No? Vintage blue Mustang? She never let you take it for a spin, maybe uh, around the jewelry district? No. Oh, that's odd, Sonny. Because the same day her car got towed from a no parking zone in the jewelry district, you took a collar for trespassing at the impound lot where her car was being held. Right. Right. That was why we broke up. Hmm? The car. It's all rushing back to you. Yeah, I borrowed the car, it got towed, which I knew was gonna be the last straw with us, so not seeing the forest for the trees, I thought I'd steal it out of the impound. She never knew what happened. But I got busted, she broke up with me, and that was it. I never saw her again. So no chance you were breaking into the impound to retrieve the gun you hid under the car seat? The gun you used to kill Paula? I didn't kill Paula. Sonny. We understand you denying it, seeing how it happened five years ago, and you being convinced by now that you got away with it. But uh, when a case is five years old, we have to dig deeper to solve it. Tap federal resources like ATF, who'll tell us whose gun it is, where it came from, the whole history. And when it gets traced back to you, you'll want to put forth an explanation of why you did what you did. Because, believe me, you don't want to go to trial without explaining your side of it. Run that gun with the ATF, or the FBI, or the GTO, or whoever. I didn't kill her. Inside. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I uh, I found the Simmons' son. He was at preschool, an aunt Scott of What's up? I was checking the incoming calls. Teru got off Gloria Simmons' cell phone. And uh, All right. <clears throat> there was one this morning from the Cozy Court Inn. That's where I found her and Don that time. What do you think? We should take a ride, just to rule it out. Your name? We'll, uh, we'll be on the air. Thanks, I'll get on with ATF. See, can I put their feet to the fire? Okay. We should get going if we're going to talk to this Mr. Stansel. How'd it go with Sonny Wood? I like him for it. You, uh, you got a minute, Baldwin? Yeah, sure. What's up with you? See a patient list from the abortion clinic. No, what am I looking for? A name with a line next to it. I don't know what the story is or what you know about this, and, and it's, it's not my business, but Baldwin, since she's on the list, she may have to give a statement, so I thought you'd want to hear from me. Does this mean she had an abortion? I don't know. Yeah, what the hell does it mean, John? It means that she was a patient there. And a week later, she said she had a miscarriage. 
I don't mean to interrupt, but the Dr. Wachtel from the clinic's here with the lawyer. Hide that. Detectives Andy Sipowitz, John Clark, attorney David Hyatt. House counsel for the Encounter Clinic. And you met Dr. Wachtel this morning. What can we do for you? Dr. Wachtel received two very angry phone calls from former patients of the Encounter Clinic, saying that your detectives had interrogated them regarding this morning's firebombing. They wanted to know who gave out their names. We also would like to know. First of all, it's a firebombing homicide, and we found them in the course of the investigation. We've pretty much ruled them out as suspects. Our concern is how you found these women in the first place. We're working from various sources. Is one of them a list of the Encounter Clinic's patients? We have various sources. Both of the women you talked to, we've had trouble with in the past. Now, somehow you know this, so you must have a list. And I'm asking again, what are you doing here? If you don't return the list and stay away from the Encounter Clinic's patients, you are going to be sued. Your guard got killed. Aren't you interested in finding who did it? Doesn't his family deserve that? I explained to you the importance, the, the sanctity of the confidentiality agreement. Which doesn't change the fact the guy was murdered and we need to find who did it. Produce the list or you're being sued, and not just the department, yourselves individually. Can't help you. Sorry. See yourselves out. If you need us, we'll be working your case. Last chance. Turn it over, or I'll get a court order and force you to. See you then. He'll get that court order. I don't doubt it. That's not going to look too great for you. I'll deal with it if it happens. Just work the case. Baldwin, they're waiting for me in anti-crime. What? What's wrong? Did you hear about the firebombing at the Encounter Women's Clinic? Yeah. Something you want to tell me, Valerie? What are you talking about? You lied to me. About what? What do you think? You didn't have a miscarriage, did you? Yes, I did. You had an abortion. No, Baldwin. Then what was your name doing on their patients list? What patients list? Where did that come from? What, is that your main concern right now, Valerie? I went for counseling. Just counseling. What, for an abortion? Which I didn't have. I was considering my options, and how dare you call me a liar? Well, what do you expect? You made every decision on your own. You never consulted me. And nothing ever came up about abortion counseling. I didn't have the procedure, so what difference would it have made? I would have known what you were thinking instead of having to guess all the time. Maybe I was trying to save you the agony I was going through. Yeah, well, you made it ten times worse. I could have helped you. I wanted to help you. Because you loved me or because you were duty-bound? And what does that mean? You said you'd marry me and you wanted to be in the baby's life, but you never said you were in love. You yeah, I had a few things on my mind. That should have been first. Our baby was first. I think the way things turned out, we dodged a bullet. You're doing anti-crime. Just go. Squad is Central K. Go ahead, 15 Squad. We can hear you, Mrs. Stansel, and we can hear the baby, so open the door. I said on the phone, I don't know where my husband is, so if you don't mind, I got my hands full. How'd you get the eye? I hit my head on a cabinet. Thanks for asking. Excuse me. I sir. didn't say you could come in. You moving out? No. Men's clothes. Your husband moving out? That's not your business. Now, will you please leave? Were you a patient at the Encounter Clinic? Yeah, so? Did you know your husband was making harassing calls to them? He wouldn't do that. 
The clinic got your phone number off their caller ID. Well, I don't know anything about it, and even if I did, I wouldn't tell you, because I don't need him locked up and not working. I got four kids in this house. We're not looking to lock him up for the phone calls. We just want some information. Did you have an abortion at the clinic? How is that your business? Did you not tell your husband about it, and that's what got him so mad at them? Doing the procedure without his consent was a gist of his phone calls to the clinic. He wasn't happy about it. Is that why he hit you? I'm not pressing charges for it, so you might as well quit asking. Is he involved in any right-to-life groups? No. When's the last time you saw him? Last night. Did he leave mad? What is this about? The encounter clinic was firebombed early this morning. He wouldn't do that. Bombed by Save the Babies in the name of Jesus and praise Jesus, and we're going to do it again. We can get you some public assistance. Chances are you'll be making more without him than if we were here. It won't cost you any more black eyes. He's a stock boy at the food court market on 14th. Son of a bitch. I want you to know I'm off the clock here. I expect to be reimbursed. Yeah, we'll see about that. Have a seat, Mr. Stansel. There was a fire down at the Encounter Women's Clinic this morning, Jim. It looks like it was arson, so, yeah, we just got to talk to everybody who called them recently, making a complaint or a threat, just to rule them out. Did, did you make some phone calls to the clinic? I made some complaints. What about them? My wife had our kid chopped up and vacuumed out and didn't tell me about it till after. You didn't know anything about it? No. Did you sign any papers saying it was OK? No, they just went ahead and killed my kid. Well, they can do that? The lady on the phone told me the law says they can right before she hung up on me. Oh, so the people at the clinic weren't too understanding. That head lady's a hard-ass bitch. Yes, whoever did it might have been somebody trying to teach her a lesson. There's the law, and then there's what's right. And if that's what whoever did this was thinking, then he gets a beer on me. We done? Jim, we, we may have a little bit of a problem here. Why don't you sit back down? You see, talking to you, hearing your voice. Did you call 911 this morning? No. Bomb by Save the Babies in the name of Jesus and praise Jesus and we're gonna do it again, sir. That's not me. Oh, Jim, come on now. That's you. We got fingerprints off the phone on Bowery where the call was made and we got a witness who saw the perp running from the clinic. Now, once we get your prints and we run a lineup, you're gonna be a collar. What? What is this? What are you trying to do? I'm trying to help you, Jim. The DA will try to make you out to be a drunken dope, but talking to you, that doesn't sound right. Hell no. Then you got to make sure that your side of it gets heard. If this was a, a, a political issue or uh, what they do goes against your religious beliefs, that's what you got to get across. That can work for you. How about if I said um, this was a wrong being made right? Lay it out for us. Maybe I drink too much. Maybe I give my wife some raps on the head. But she shouldn't be able to kill my kid for it. So you bombed the clinic to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. That's right. And I don't care what I call that bitch at the clinic. She could have been nicer on the phone. <clears throat> what saved the babies? I, I made that up to throw you off. Why don't you spell that out for us? How you doing, partner? I'm fine. You know, there's nothing someone you love can say that's so bad that it can't be taken back or forgiven. Hey, Greg, did you get word from ATF? Yeah. Uh, the gun from the Mustang was originally purchased by a guy named Tim Roberts in Hollywood, Florida. Try and get in touch with him. Uh, he's dead three years from liver cancer. His widow says they used to own a gun that uh, Tim sold to one of his friends. She didn't know who, and she can't recall Sonnywood. All right. I guess we're going to bring that part of it up and we go back to Sunny Wood. What exactly uh, will we be bringing up, uh, seeing how we have nothing on him? Follow my lead. Uh, partner, you're obviously a little tense. Uh, think there's any wisdom in taking time to regroup? I'm fine. Out of here. 
Where you from, Sonny? I was born in Decatur. So what took you to Florida? Sunshine? Good dope? Florida? You got a very selective memory. Hollywood, Florida. I heard of it. Never been there. I'm gonna say a name, Sonny. And then I'm gonna give you the opportunity to tell us your side of what happened to Paula Thomas. <laughs> what is it, the true name of God or something? I'm gonna say anything outside of telling that story. And you're a caller for the homicide. You do 25 when you could have done 10. You ready? Yeah. Tim Roberts. Don't know him. So he thinks because Tim Roberts been dead three years, we don't know who went down in Florida. Can't say we didn't give him a chance. He doesn't think we talked to Robert's widow. But that she remember husband Tim selling you his gun. Which is too bad, because she dug up the receipt her husband made out for the gun. That puts it in your hands, Sonny. The gun to kill Paula Thomas. That you committed a crime trying to retrieve. See you at trial. You really think 10 years? Depends on how straight you are with us. I mean, I was a stone junkie back then. <clears throat> I'm reformed, though, now. What's that got to do with Paula? I stole this necklace that she had, and, and she found out about it, and she was going to turn me in. So, um, I accidentally, I swear to God, accidentally shot her, trying to calm her down. What's the story with the car? After the accident, I hid the gun under the seat, went down to the jewelry district to try and hawk her stuff. But the car got towed, so. You know, like you said, I broke into the impound to get the gun back. It's a sob story if I ever heard one. I wasn't thinking straight back then. So, ten years. Time off for good behavior. It could be out in what, six? Could be. Thanks for this. Sure thing. Tony Rodriguez. Captain Pat Fraker, IAB. Captain Fraker, how do you do? Sit. What brings you down? Uh, introducing myself, first of all. I just took over command of Group 67 and uh, thought I'd say hello. All right. And I thought I'd get my hands a little dirty before I settled behind a desk. Some questions came up on the Don Harrison case. You're really on top of things. That just jumped off. How's it coming? Wrapped up. Roger Simmons shot his wife, shot Harrison, then drove to Brooklyn and blew his brains out. We have a solid timeline together. Were you aware of the marital tensions between Harrison and Rita Ortiz? I knew they were divorcing. Have any sense of why? Now, how does this fit in the case? Some of his co-workers suggested there might have been some impropriety behind the scenes unrelated to the homicide. Impropriety here? Did Don Harrison ever visit the squad? A few times to see how Rita was working, huh? Was there ever an altercation in the squad between Don and Rita? His co-worker said he mentioned one. It was hardly an altercation. It was over pretty quick. What was the nature of the incident? That's between Rita and Don. What's this about, Captain? Harrison was convinced his wife was having an affair with a detective in the squad. Do you know anything about it? I saw no evidence of that. Would you be surprised to hear Don suspected you were the one having an affair with Detective Ortiz? That's not true. Lieutenant, if you are seeing Detective Ortiz, it's something you want to get in front of. All right, my relationship with Rita Ortiz has never been more than supervisory. Anyone who says different is lying. That would be Don Harrison's friends. Well, they can kiss my ass. Tony, just asking a question. And I'm answering. I run a clean squad. If you want to waste your time trying to prove otherwise, be my guest. No point in that, is there? Pleasure meeting you. How's she doing? Uh, hanging in. Listen, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna bail on the planetarium. I thought I'd get her home, make sure she's okay. Yeah, I'll explain it to you. Okay, um, tell them we're still on for the zoo tomorrow. Do you have any physical evidence tying Sonny Wood to killing Paula Thomas? Just a gun. Which, aside from his confession, we can't prove he ever touched. Uh, this is true. 
I hope you have a good rights waiver signed and dated. We did. You're gonna need it, and a video statement, too, if you can talk him into it. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave that to Baldwin. You should have seen him in a room, counselor. He, he had the perp thanking him for letting him confess. Uh, quite an interview. I'll get a video team up here as soon as possible. Something else you wanted to say? I was gonna ask you the same thing. Maybe we should cool it for a while. If anyone's available to join, I got a hunch you might want to be around friends. Yeah, sure. I'm in. Yeah, me too. I got Theo. Detective, I could get Theo. <clears throat> we were just talking, and uh, <clears throat> would you mind if the rest of us joined you and Connie? No, not at all. I thought you might like the company. I, uh, I appreciate it, but um, I mean, if you have something else to do. It's what we want to do. Squad sticks together, we're a team. You're on the team. <laughs> 